Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and you're joining in on the uh, second part of my Ground Station Pro tutorial slash uh, overview. So I'm pulling up Ground Station Pro right now on my iPad. Now this one's not going to be as exciting as the last one. The uh, last video we actually got to fly and do some shooting and uh, pull a model together, but this time I wanted to actually give you an overview of the new Ground Station Pro, because this is Ground Station Pro 2.0. And I'd been waiting for this for a while, and it finally came out um, with support for the Mavic 2 Pro, and you can see that right here on the main screen. So the screen's changed a little bit. Normally, in the old Ground Station Pro, you'd pop right into your missions. Now you'll notice up at the top the little uh, warning that uh, I'm not on the internet. And it's really internet dependent. The Ground Station Pro desperately wants to be on the net. You don't have to use it on the net all the time. We'll talk about that. But let's take a look at this, this uh, interface here. So it's changed a little bit. Like I said, the original layout was the My Missions. But now we've got something a little different up in the upper left corner. I've got RLC Design, so that's, that's me. And right now I'm in my personal space. I can also create a team. So Ground Station Pro is looking to become more of a high-end commercial product for drone pilots. And you can actually create teams and share maps together, hence why it wants the internet connection. It, it wants to talk to people. So I can also download all of the data here, and I'm just going to close that up. So below my personal space, we've got you know flight duration, since I did some testing for the last tutorial. Got 30 minutes and 37 seconds of flight time and four miles and 553 feet. Below that, we've got our purchased functions or functions that we'd like to purchase. And then we can jump into our missions if we like. Before we do that, let's look at the center area. We've got our drones. So you actually have to register your drone on Ground Station Pro. So I haven't registered my regular Mavic uh, yet, just the Mavic 2 Pro. And in the next item, this is what everyone had been waiting for with Ground Station Pro because it didn't give you flight logs before, which was kind of inconvenient. So now you get your flight logs. They're supposed to auto-sync to your DJI GO 4 app as well. What I have found is that they don't auto-sync, but that's okay. I found a way around it. So the upper right-hand corner, you can see that the happy little cloud has an X on it. So it's not as happy as it'd like to be because it's not connected. The next one is my flight records. So I can actually share my flight records. So what it, you could email them to yourself or save them onto your iCloud documents. There's several ways to share your flight records. And then you can upload the flight records after to something like Air Data or to D DJI, as a matter of fact. So um, I have updated my Air Data account with the flights that I did for the last video, and it worked fine. So hooray for flight records. Finally, the little mail icon. This is just uh, to get announcements uh, from Ground Station Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that up. So we can take a look at the flight logs. We can export our flight logs. I'm still, you know, the jury's out on AutoSync because it hasn't worked for me, but maybe other Ground Station Pro users have had success with it. If you have, drop me a note, uh, put a comment down in the bottom. I'd like to know what you did to get the uh, AutoSync out there. So, all right, let's take a look now. Let's go into My Missions, which for people who've used Ground Station Pro before, this is going to look pretty familiar to you. Now, number one, we're not connected to a drone, and we're not connected to the net right now. So on the left-hand side, I've got my missions, materials, and maps. One of the features in Ground Station Pro that you could take advantage of, let's go back to that main screen, is purchased functions. So you can actually make a 2D map of an area that you've flown and you can upload it to the cloud and you can use it as a reference point on construction sites or other locations where you're doing your job. But um, that's a $300 application. If we go in here, so I have paid for the, uh, the map point of interest, the uh, 3D orbit. And oh, look at that, I'm not connected to the net. So I'm gonna have to connect to the net to show you those features. Basically, let me just tell you, right here in my purchase functions, the first one is a 3D map point of interest that you can set up some orbits, let's say around a building or a tower, and you can do a 3D model. 
The next item is KML and shape files. You can actually import files that you've laid out elsewhere into here to help you plan your flight. The final item uh, is a 2D map model that you can actually assemble and display on your iPad after your flight. So if you're in the field and you need to make some reference points, um, this, is, this might be a good idea. Now the KML and shape file is 50 bucks and the, um, that 2D map is $300. So I have not subscribed to that because that's a little steep. Let's go back into my missions and I'm just gonna up at the top bar here, there's a button that says map. And so I do have a map from my mission number 10. I tested this out. And so I've got this little area where I was actually doing a new home construction flight. And so I flew the area just to give myself an idea and I also photographed it at the time. And it made this little 2D model for me, which is a great point of reference since there was no house there showing up on Google Earth or Google Maps. All right, I'm going back over to my missions now. And what I wanted to show you here, when I click onto one of my missions, look at that. So I've still got this, um, this map here, so that's great. Those missions were completed. But when I go look at other missions, there we go. I don't have the internet right now. So normally we do not get a lot of cached map information for these missions. So if you're sitting at home planning a mission and you're connected to the internet, you're gonna see all of your topographic maps or your satellite maps, whatever it is that you're using to plan. But when you're disconnected from the net, you most likely will not be able to see those maps. So if you go out to a location and you don't have internet access and you haven't pre-planned your flight, you might be looking at a screen like this. So there are some ways around that too. So we can deal with that if we are in the field at a location. Um, we can plan our maps or, or, or models accordingly. So what do we do? I'm just tapping down to the next one. Yep, I have no map of that area. No map of that area. If I create a new mission, so I'm just hitting the create a new mission. So number one, we've got that photo map and that photo map could go into that $300 application if you wanted to document while you were in the field. We can then do a virtual fence. We can do a 3D map area or the 3D map point of interest since I paid for that feature and also waypoint routes. Well, when I go to do a new 3D map, I can either tap to create the map. So that's probably when I'm sitting connected to the internet, right? And if I go out in the field and I find myself without network connectivity and I, and I don't have a satellite map downloaded, I can actually use the aircraft to plot out my area that I'd like to, to, um, to fly. So this is extremely convenient and let me tell you why. So I'm gonna tap on this and hey, I don't have my drone connected right now. Several weeks ago, I went over to a client location at a new construction site. I got to the new construction site and I pulled up Maps Made Easy real quick because um, that's one that I use regularly when I'm documenting areas. And I pulled up Maps Made Easy and I was connected to the internet because I had a portable hotspot with me. And I pulled up the, uh, the satellite map there and there were no reference points because I was standing in, in the middle of nowhere as far as the Google Maps were concerned. And because I was standing in the middle of nowhere, I had no reference points. Some of the new roads that were in the location didn't exist on the uh, Google Earth map. So I was kind of stuck. Um, I'm standing out there saying, well, how am, I going to, um, how am I going to plot out this flight since I've got no points of reference? And that's where flying your drone and dropping map points is going to come in really handy. So if you're on this new construction site and you're in a location that's growing and the Google satellites haven't updated yet, you can actually fly your drone around the location and you can drop points. So right over here on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that I've got a button that's called set. Now when I'm connected to the drone, the drone's going to have its GPS information. It's going to be feeding information back to the iPad so I can actually fly around where I'd like to make my 2D or 3D model. And I can hit the set button as I go around to lay out my flight. So this is fantastic. You can also later use the same feature for documenting, you know, doing time lapse 
and progression reports for construction clients. So once you've flown the mission the first time, you can reuse that mission over and over again so that you can show them their development um, through their two or three D model. So, so anyways, there we go. I'm coming back to my missions again and we can actually, so the other option that we have, I'm going to hit the plus symbol here again. So another option you have for new construction sites beyond doing 2D maps and 3D maps is that we can actually do waypoints as well. And when creating waypoints, we can create waypoints once again by tapping. So if we're at home and connected to the internet, we can pre-plan our flight. We can next use the aircraft, so we can drop those points, or we can do the aircraft and record the altitude. So if we're on location for a new construction client, let's say, they're in a location where there's nothing on Google Earth or Google Maps, and we need to start plotting out where their roads are, where the concrete's being poured, where the house is being dropped, um, you know, whatever it is, as they start that new construction project, we can actually fly the aircraft and record each location that we would like to image or video. So we can actually create a flight path very simply with the drone, recording its GPS location and also recording its elevation. We can also tell the drone on these waypoint routes, I'd like you to stop here for so many seconds. I'd like you to take a video for X amount of time. I'd like you to take a certain number of photos. So with this coming into a new construction site, we have a lot of opportunities to work around limitations in other available maps for us to draw reference from. So this is one of the fantastic features that I do really like about Ground Station Pro. And it's also a feature that comes right out of Litchi as well, because Litchi, you can also do your waypoints and you can use your drone to create your waypoints. So if you don't have a point of reference on your iPad for planning missions for these new construction sites or remote sites, you have the option to fly and create your layout for your upcoming model. So I think that's fantastic. And what we're going to do in the third and final installment of this Ground Station Pro series is we're actually going to connect up the drone and we're going to go to one of my construction locations and I'm going to show you, hey, it's a big, empty nothing uh, as far as Google Earth and Google Maps is concerned. So let's go ahead and use Ground Station Pro to plot out our flight area and also to plot out a, rate, a waypoint route where we can actually do an ongoing time lapse and progression report for the construction site. So we'll see that in uh, lecture number three. So like I said, this was going to be the boring one. Sorry for it being a little boring. It's not as exciting as being out flying, but I thought I would tell you about the features that are here. And before we wrap this up, I'm going to take a look at one more item for you. So I paused this for just a moment, and now I'm back. And what I did here is I actually uh, reset Ground Station Pro and connected to the Internet. So I've got my portable hotspot here now. And so Ground Station Pro, oh, it's complaining. It wants me to log in again. So it's kind of sad that, um, that I disappeared for a few moments. So I'm going to go ahead to my personal space and I'm going to log out and log back in. You're not going to see my passwords or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm to log out. And now we're going to stop this for a moment. All right, so here I am. I've re-logged in to my DJI account because it was unhappy that I'd been off the network for a bit there. So I just wanted to show you. Now that we're on the network, let's go look at that My Purchased Functions really quick. So I just hit the plus symbol. And so you can do a subscription. So I paid $10 months ago for the 3D point of interest, which is an orbit around an object like maybe a building or a tower. Uh, the next one, the KML and shapefile imports, $50. And you can import the KML and shapefiles, view them on the map, and create flight missions from the geometries. So that might be useful for some folks. The final one that I'm interested in, but not that interested in, is this photo map. So I can fly the mission, stitch all the images together, and get a two-dimensional photo map. What do I do with it afterward? It's $300. It gives me points of reference for the job site that I'm working on, so that's great. But there's really not much else that I can do with this, so it's not 
this super valuable thing, and it's certainly, for me at least right now, is not worth $300. So still, keep in mind, GroundStation Pro is free, so you can use most of the features of it, but that's one of the features that I'm still scratching my head on. So here we go, we've got our drone again, and we also have our flight logs, so let's pop over there. And there we go, there's my flight logs from recent missions that I've done. Now, on the upper right-hand side, we now have our happy little cloud for synchronizing. We have our flight records, and we can check out each of the flight records, or we can export them. So we've got our little export, so we can export them to turn your iPad into a little web server. So if you're at home and you connect your iPad up to your network, you can actually download your flight logs right off your iPad. Kind of cool. Or you can do the system standard share, which is email it to yourself, message it to yourself, save it to files, whatever you'd like to do. So I'm going to close that up. And then going back into my missions now. So now the iPad is happier because, hey, look, I, you know, I've got my maps and everything here and I can go ahead and zoom right on in, or I can actually pull up some of my previous missions, jump right to them, and uh, see where they're at. So now when I tag that, there we go. So that's the mission that we used previously on the first installment of this series. So now when we're looking around, hey, there's all of our satellite feed. So satellite feed's great, but when you start getting into locations where it's the middle of nowhere, there's no houses, there's no points of reference, like, let's just take a look out here along the highway. So if somebody were to ask me to come out here along Route 89 because they're building a new building, I've got no points of reference here. So like I said, when creating a new mission, we can actually, if we did the 3D map, for example, we could fly the aircraft around the construction site, lay out our waypoints, and then create our 3D model afterward. So this is one of the big conveniences of Ground Station Pro. So I can see this coming in really handy on new build locations, new remote build locations, you know, or places where you need to do, let's say, um, some longer term video where you're coming back over and over again to do progress reports. You can either do your 3D map models or you could utilize the waypoint routes. And so we're going to do that on the next installment and the final installment of this series on Ground Station Pro. I wanted to say to everyone, thanks for stopping by and checking out that first video. I didn't realize Ground Station Pro was on so many people's radar screens still. So I can say uh, version 2.0 definitely improved over the original version. Glad to see that I can use my Mavic 2 Pro with it now. And... Glad to see that there's a little more power behind it, and um, it's definitely a more robust platform than it was, let's say, in January of 2018. So if you're an iPad owner, it can't hurt to have this in your arsenal. You might run into a location where Ground Station Pro is perfect for your next job site. All right, everyone, I'm taking off now, and like I said, so this is the most boring installment of this and in installment number three, we're going to do some flying and we're going to lay out some waypoint routes and some 3D map areas with our drone and Ground Station Pro. So I'll see you on that upcoming video.